Chapter 17, Law of Friendship. Heads turn when my grandfather comes storming across the lunch court. He hates to do laundry and has started to borrow from my mom's closet when he's running low on clean clothes. Today's he's wear Today he's wearing her hot pink sweatpants and Phantom of the Opera t-shirt. I cannot believe this reading list, he huffs and holds up the book Catcher in the Rye. What's wrong with it, I ask? He starts eating my leftover chips. All this Holden kid does is whine. He should just get a job. I haven't read it yet, I say, although my mom talks about it all the time. You don't need to, my grandfather says. You should be reading the classics. I think it is a classic. Please, I highly doubt Newton wasted his time on this drivel. Newton? You mean like the cookie? No, Isaac Newton, the father, the father of modern physics. My eyes are drawn past him to the lunch line, where Brianna is waiting to pay. She's with a bunch of volleyball players. It must be the kind of sp some kind of spirit date because they're wearing their team shirts and have put on silly face paint. Isaac Newton established the three laws of motion. My grandfather says, The first law states that an object will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless an external force acts upon it. He smacks a fork and it bounces, which in this case was my hand, he says. Was it science that happened to Brianna and me? Were we two objects in motion hurtling through space and then an external force, middle school, volleyball, life, hit us? As my grandfather drones on, I wonder, shouldn't there be a law of friendship that if you're friends with someone practically your whole life, you can't just suddenly stop and change directions? My father's voice shakes me back to the present, and that is Newton's law of motions. You just learned physics, Ellie. Do you feel smarter? I stare at him. Raj walks up to the table and eyes my grandfather. Love the new look, Doc, he says. Speaking of looks, Raj has a new piercing, a silver ball under his lower lip. My grandfather shakes his head. Why do you do that to yourself? You're going to get a terrible infection. Have you heard of staff? It's self-expression, Raj says. Self-expression. Really? I'll be sure to alert Harvard, my grandfather mocks. Raj comes ho home with us after school. We sit around my puzzle at the kitchen table. My grandfather's been working on it lately. Sometimes when we're watching TV, he'll abruptly walk over to the puzzle table, pick up a piece, and click in it. Click it in. It's like he's been thinking about it the whole time. My, gran my grandfather gives Raj an assessing look. Do you know how any underworld types who could help us break into a building, into building twenty four? Raj stares at him. Why would I know someone like that? Yeah, I just assumed. Raj gives him a funny look. Well, start thinking of a way to get in. He orders Raj. You're on the clock. Then he grabs his copy of Catcher in the Rye and stops out of the kitchen. Raj turns to me. Where'd you go? The bathroom. He'll probably be there for a while. I heat up some burritos. It turns out that Raj loves them as much as I do. We settle down at the kitchen counter to eat and make lists of how to break into the lab. Our ideas are silly, mailing ourselves to the lab as packages or parachuting in. The strange thing is, it all feels so cozy. I wonder if this is what it was like for Oppenheimer and his team of scientists when they were working on the bomb. Did they sit around eating burritos and coming up with ideas? We need a name, I tell Raj. He looks at me and I explain. Like they did with the Manhattan Project when they were creating the atomic bomb. I try out a few names. The Melvin Sigarsky Project, the Jellyfish Project, the Raj and Ellie are totally cool project. And then Raj snaps his fingers. I got it. The Burrito Project. My grandfather explodes in the kitchen, shouting, They closed my email account! Who? He's outraged. My email account at the lab. Someone closed my account. I can't access it anymore. That's a bummer, Raj says. But you can just set up a new email account, you know. They're free. I did one for my grandmother. But my grandfather is beside himself. It's not that. All my contacts are in there. The diver who found the T. Melvinus. I don't, even, I don't even know his last name. All I know is his name is Billy, and he's Australian. Do you know how many Australian billies, Australian billies there are? Raj and I share a look. A lot, I guess. My grandfather fumes. I bet it was the Terrence character, the one in the flashy suit. He kept telling me to move my stuff out of the lab. Little upstart. Who does he think he is? I have years of experience of him. Decades. He waves the catcher in the ride book in the air like a weapon. He's just got this Holden character. A phony. There's a beat of silence. Raj said, you're reading the catcher in the ride? That's a really good book. Chapter 18. Degrees. Ben is taking us all out for dinner. My grandfather insists on wearing a jacket and tie, even though we're just going to the Mexican place. Quite the fashion statement, my mom says. What? Don't people dress up for dinner anymore? He counters. When we get to the restaurant, Ben's not there yet, so we grab a table in the back. I love the burritos at this place. Real big spender, huh? My grandfather says. We should have just gone to a Chinese place. 
They give free refills on ships here, I tell him. Ooh la la, my grandfather says, how fancy. My mother glares at him, and then the bell on the door rings and his face lights up. Ben walks in, wearing a dark suit and a tie. You see, he's wearing a jacket and tie, my grandfather says. Sorry I'm late, client meeting. The waitress comes and takes her order. I get my usual, a burrito. My mother and Ben both get fish tacos. When the waitress arrives, brings her meals, my grandfather's order takes up half the table. He starts eating immediately, working his way through his food. Ben seems like a little envious. I was like that at your age, Ben tells my grandfather. Now I have to watch myself. My grandfather just looks at him and stuffs another forkful in his mouth. So how are you liking the new school, Melvin? Ben asks. My grandfather doesn't even look up. He's just, he's got the whole sullen teenager thing going down. My mom clears his throat, her throat. I'm unimpressed, he finally says. I find the curriculum rather lacking. Really, Ben says. Melvin was in the gifted and talented program at his old school, my mom says. He used, he's used to more of a challenge. My grandfather burps loudly. Melvin, what, he says. Don't be rude. I'm not being rude. It's the bacteria. My mother looks at him. What? There are bacteria in your stomach that help you digest food. During the process, gas is released. That's why you burp. And fart, I ask. Exactly, he nods. My mother groans, but Ben laughs and says, Seems like you're learning something at school. Where did you go to school, my grandfather asks Ben. Melvin, my mom says. Let him ask questions. I like an inquiring mind. I did undergrad at Harvard. I've heard of it, my grandfather says, and I got my PhD at MIT. My grandfather appears vaguely impressed. Who do you work for now? A startup here in Silicon Valley. We make video games. Video games? You went to Harvard and MIT and that's what you're doing now? Ben nods and picks up a chip. My grandfather shakes his head. What a complete waste of degrees, he said. It's an incredibly artistic field, my mom says. Oh well, if it's artistic, then I'm sure it's wonderful. My mother rubs her forehead like she's having a migraine. So have you been married before? Ben blinks. No. Any kids? Mm -hmm. No. I think that's enough, Melvin, my mom says. Just a minute, I have one last question. Yes? Just what are your intentions? My mom cuts him off. Melvin! Then my grandfather points to Ben's plate. With that last taco, my grandfather finishes with a smirk. <laughs>